There's something in the water in New York City. At least that's what New Yorkers claim. The city's water has been credited for making things like pizza and bagels taste better. Yet getting this water to the taps of over eight and a half million people is no easy feat. From pristine reservoirs. The scope and scale of this water supply was unlike anything that was ever tried in modern society. To the state-of-the-art treatment facilities. So in this facility, we're treating somewhere between 900 million to a billion gallons a day. To the tops of some of New York City's famous skyscrapers. Without this infrastructure, New York City would not be the metropolis it is today. It's really important work that New Yorkers don't see, but they certainly appreciate every day when they turn on that tap and the water is there without having to think about it. This is how a billion gallons of sparkling clean water gets to New York City every day. While most of the city's water infrastructure is hidden from view, there is at least one very visible piece. It's a famous New York icon and a business that is still very much thriving today. Hi, I'm Henry Rosenwalk, fifth generation of Rosenwalk Tank. So my great-grandfather, Harris Rosenwalk, bought a barrel company in the 1800s and converted that at the time into the Rosenwalk Tank Company, uh, which is the company you see today. From that point on, it's been passed down from father to son. My father always said, uh, without water tanks and uh, Rosenwalk, that New York City would go dry. These wooden water tanks that dot New York's skyline provide drinking water, fire suppression, or both, to buildings six stories or higher. They are built to last 30 years or more. With so many tanks to maintain, Rosenwalk tanks spend several days a week tearing down old tanks and replacing them with new ones. You can't free the heights, otherwise you can't do this job. CJ Adonis has been working with Rosenwalk tanks for 17 years. I'm from Guyana. And where I'm from, buildings is not this tall. And when I come to this country, I was, I was amazed of all these big skyscrapers. And when I started working on the water towers, it was amazing to me. Some people have to pay for the view. I'm seeing the view free every day. My dad always said that Paris has the Eiffel Tower, Pisa has the Leaning Tower, New York has the Water Tower. There's no other place like New York that you see these wood water tanks in the skyline. It's one of a kind. When settlers first arrived on the shores of this marshy island, a limited amount of usable water was available. Despite Manhattan being surrounded by rivers, their proximity to the ocean makes them too salty to be a source of drinking water. Freshwater ponds and springs, and later the introduction of wells, provided water for the city's growing population throughout early European settlements. Yet with the lack of any infrastructure for trash or sewage at the time, residents would pour their waste into the streets or waterways. By 1837, work was finally underway to engineer a system that would provide New York with a fresh supply of water. Not even 50 miles from the city, a water source was waiting to be tapped. The old Croton Dam was completed in 1842. An aqueduct carried water via gravity from the Croton River in Westchester County to reservoirs in Manhattan. Clean water was welcomed into the city with much fanfare. And essentially when they turned it on in July of 1842, many of these problems, fire, filth, disease, go away essentially overnight, right? It solves the public health issue, the gravity-fed nature provides pressurized firefighting the way we think of it today, and they're able to keep the city healthy and clean. So we're here today at New Croton Dam. When it was built in 1905, it was the biggest dam in the world. 
And as you can see, it was built with this beautiful spillway that people come from all over to enjoy because sometimes Mother Nature gives us a little more water than we can hold on to. Today, New York City receives 10% of its water from the Croton system. While this reservoir was a marvel on its own, soon the city would need to find more water. By the end of the 19th century, the city as we know it today began to take shape. The five boroughs consolidated to form the city of greater New York. And its population began to soar, growing by about 115,000 people per year. By 1904, New York was home to four million. The city barely escaped a water shortage more than once during this time. The New York City Board of Water Supply was created in 1905 and tasked with finding another source of water at whatever cost. Many towns in upstate New York were claimed via eminent domain. They were flooded so that New York City could keep growing. This played out throughout the 20th century, creating what is today the Catskill-Delaware watershed system. Together, they provide the city with 90% of its water. The Ashokan Reservoir is just one of 19 reservoirs in the system. Four towns were submerged and eight were relocated by the time the reservoir was completed in 1915. More than 2,000 people were forced out of their homes, often without fair compensation or ample notice. This is really the only place you can come and hear your water sing to you. Because as the water runs through these units, runs through these pipes, runs through the baffles, it creates this little hum. Don't stay too long, it'll turn your brain to pea soup. No, it, it won't do that. The city prides itself on having one of the only sources of unfiltered water in the country. It is only treated with chlorine, fluoride, food-grade phosphoric acid, and UV lights at facilities like this one, the Catskill Delaware UV Treatment Facility in Westchester County, New York. So in this facility, we're treating somewhere between 900 million to a billion gallons a day. The water flows into one of the 56 tanks, each one equipped with 210 UV light bulbs. As it flows through at 1.5 meters per second, the light kills waterborne pathogens that could make humans sick. This facility, like all our facilities, are built not for the city we have today, but the city we might have 100 years from now, right? So this was built to treat more than 2 billion gallons of water. We only use less than 1 billion. After the water is treated, it can then continue its journey to the city. Water reaches the city via three main tunnels, aptly named Water Tunnels 1, 2, and 3. The first two began operating in 1917 and 1936, respectively. The third has been in use with different sections, opening in 1998 and 2013. It is just now nearing its final stages of completion after more than 50 years of construction. It is the most expensive capital project the city has ever taken on, with the price tag of $6 billion. Despite its international fame, New York's water system doesn't come without its share of problems. In the early 1990s, leaks were discovered in the Delaware Aqueduct. The aqueduct is tasked with providing the city with 500 million gallons of water a day, yet it has been leaking 20 million gallons every day for the past 30 years. A solution with a $1.2 billion estimated price tag has been in the works for years. The Delaware Aqueduct Bypass Tunnel will allow the city to drain the main aqueduct for repairs and reroute the water around the damaged tunnel. We know that New York City's water is heralded around the world as being some of the best water anywhere. But certainly it doesn't happen by accident, right? A lot of planning, decades, centuries of planning went into building this system, and that planning goes on to this very day. From mountain streams, 
to the tops of skyscrapers. This is the system that New Yorkers and its visitors can thank for its water. That's only if they ever stop to think about it. As a New Yorker, we are very fortunate to have running water. It's something we do take for granted every day. We're sort of the great silent service. You wake up in the morning to brush your teeth, take a shower, make your coffee. You turn that tap, the water has been there every single day since 1842. We take a lot of pride in that. If we're doing our job right, New Yorkers should never have to think about where their water is coming from or the quality of the water.